You're listening to a New York Islanders episode of the Jacob Falk Show. He's breaking down the team's latest goings on as only he can. Follow him on Twitter at Real Jacob Falk. Here he is. Jacob Falk. Hey, Islanders fans. Welcome to another New York Islanders episode. Of the Jacob Volk Show. I am Jacob Volk. And this show is going to be me giving my grade on what they did in advance of the trade deadline, which just passed at 3 p.m. Eastern Time. Just like last year, Lou Lamorello made two trades. One trade involving a defenseman, and another trade involving two forwards. Last year, the trade for the forward was just one forward, J.G. Peugeot. This year, he acquired two, Kyle Palmieri and Travis Zajac. And that's where I'll start. It certainly took Paul Mary and Zajac a little bit to find their footing. They were invisible against the Flyers. The entire team played like garbage against the Rangers on Friday. Yesterday, they finally showed up. Paul Mary got his first goal as an Islander. Travis Zajac made a big play along the boards to tie up the Ranger who was trying to get the puck out of his zone. Matthew Barzell ended up getting the puck. He passed it to Ryan Pulock, who sniped home the game winner. So here's hoping this is the start of a great stretch run for Paul Mary and Zajac. And I think it will be. All right, Trotz decided to arrange the lines a little differently than I would have, but he's the second best coach in Islanders history. I'm not. He can do whatever he wants. He had Paul Mary, Pajot, and Zajac on the third line their first couple games. Then yesterday, he moved Zajac up to the first line, and Oliver Wallstrom took over on the third line. And it seemed to work. I mean, did the Islanders play well yesterday? The answer is no. They really haven't been playing that well recently. April 3rd against the Flyers, you give up two third-period goals to Claude Giroux. The next game against the Capitals, you only muster one lousy goal. Thank God it was enough. Semyon Varlamov stood on his head. The game after that, you look dead to the world. You end up winning in a shootout. Then you get blown out by the Rangers, and then you find a way to win yesterday. The Islanders are 4-1 and one in their last five games, and in those five games, they have not played well. I mean, they're finding ways to win games. Now, granted, four of those games were against two teams in the Flyers and Rangers that probably aren't gonna make the playoffs. But they're not bad teams. The Rangers aren't bad. The Flyers aren't bad. 
They're just not better than the Bruins. Would I like them to be playing better? The answer is yes. No question. But they're winning. At the end of the day... Unless you're going up against the Capitals, Penguins, or Bruins, I don't care if you need to win in overtime or a shootout. Just get those two points. And like I said, Palmieri and Zajac helped them get those two points yesterday. And Palmieri was linked to the Islanders heavily He always made sense. There's no question. Local kid from Smithtown. The Islanders have had a hole on their third line left wing all year. You put Paul Mary in there, that third line of Paul Mary, Pajot, and Wallstrom, maybe the best third line in all of hockey. I have no idea why Wallstrom didn't play on Thursday and Friday. It has something to do with waivers and keeping everyone around so you don't lose anyone. Who the hell cares if you lose Leo Komarov? Who cares if you lose Kiefer Bellows? Who cares if you lose Ross Johnston? Who cares if you lose Michael DeCall? Wallstrom needs to play. I don't care what extenuating factors there are. Oliver Wallstrom needs to play. But when Anders Lee went down, it opened up a hole on the first line. And more importantly than that, they missed that veteran leadership. Travis Zajac brings that. And I thought the first line had a really good game yesterday. I thought Barzell was all over the ice making plays. That and the third line. The two lines that the former Devils are on were the only lines that showed up yesterday. That's not a coincidence. The second line you just want more from, Beauvillier, Nelson, and Bailey. They just have stretches where... All three of them are invisible. Like, maybe they'll have an offensive opportunity that they'll miss. Then they'll skate down the ice and play defense. And then the whistle blows. Okay, that's it. They're very unremarkable. And that fourth line, Matt Martin had a lousy game. The two bad tripping penalties... Clutterbuck is invisible. Sezikis has been good. I like him. It's just... The biggest issue with this team... Is getting all four lines cooking. I mean, there are no holes on this team. If you were to write out the lines on a piece of paper... You'd say this team has a great chance of winning the Stanley Cup. There's a lot of parity in the NHL. These are the teams that I think can win the Stanley Cup. Hurricanes, Lightning, Panthers, Capitals, Islanders, Penguins, Bruins, Leafs, Jets, Oilers, Avalanche, Golden Knights. That's 12 teams. And some of them are going to be out after the first round of the playoffs. The Islanders are not going to have an easy path to the Stanley Cup. You'll notice, I mentioned four teams in the East. I didn't do that for any other division. There's a reason for that. The East division is probably the best division in hockey. The Islanders have to beat two of those teams. That's not easy. They need everyone to show up. If you're not going to get on the score sheet, which I don't expect, at least be smart with the puck. Make good, clean passes. Play good defense. 
and generate good scoring opportunities. That's all I want. The Islanders haven't been doing that recently. It is a little scary. Do I think it will round into form? The answer is yes. But the sooner it rounds into form, the better. There's not much time left in the season. We're 75% of the way home. The Islanders have played 42 games. That's exactly three quarters of this 56-game season. In these final 14 games, you're going to lose some. Okay, obviously. I'm not expecting to go 15-0 and in their last 15 games. But just play good hockey. I'm okay if you play boring hockey. Which is what the Islanders play when they're at their best. That's okay. I don't mind that as long as you're winning. Just play sound hockey. That's all I want. Now on to the Coburn trade, which I talked about today on the NHL trade deadline recap. I guess I'll put a finer point on it. Coburn makes sense. He's a proven veteran. He's been in this league a long time. This year for the Senators... He had two assists in 16 games. The year before that with the Lightning, he had four points in 40 games. He's not going to put up 20 points a year anymore, but he will play solid, sound defense. That's what he's always done. And last year, he had his name etched into the Stanley Cup. That does mean something. This guy knows how to win. I know he wasn't a big part of what the Lightning did in the bubble. But still, he was around those guys. That does count for something. Did they need Coburn? The answer is no. They had Sebastian Ajo and Thomas Hickey. Those guys were fine as the 7th and 8th defensemen. But Coburn is better than Ajo. He's better than Hickey. And all they gave up was a 7th rounder next year to get him. You do that trade if you're a Lamorello. I didn't mind that at all. I thought it was a really good move. I thought it made a ton of sense. So now on to my grade. The moment you've all been waiting for. Can I get a drum roll please? I'm giving them an A+. I'm not saying this as an Islanders fanboy. You know that I have never been scared to criticize my team. But I really think they earned an A+. here. The Palmieri and Zajac trade made perfect sense. They gave up nothing to improve their D-man depth. A week ago, the Islanders were in a position where they had to get a lot better if they wanted to have a real chance of winning the Stanley Cup. They got a lot better. Paul Marion Zajac will be perfect fits. You saw glimpses of that yesterday. If, God forbid, something happens to Pellick or Pulock or Letty or Mayfield or Green or Dobson, Braden Coburn can slide in and hold his own. And when the biggest piece that you give up for Palmieri and Zajac is... This year's first rounder, a year that you have a legitimate chance to win the Stanley Cup, 
You do that trade 100 times out of 100. That was a better trade than the Taylor Hall trade. The Taylor Hall trade would have just been getting one guy. The Islanders got two. They needed two. Because of these two moves, the Islanders have a legitimate chance of winning a Stanley Cup. That makes them worthy of an A-plus to me. Regular episodes of the Jacob Volk Show come your way every weekday afternoon. Next week, you're going to get a New York Yankees show. And that cycle will continue until the playoffs. Then... It'll be Yankees for every Monday night. Until next time, I am Jacob Volk saying that Dimitro Timoshev should have been traded for an ECHL player, a seventh round draft pick, and a bucket of pucks.